Okay, I'm recording this, so I'll send a video out a little bit later on. So today we're going to go through trading the major indices Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P using options and seasonal patterns. And once you recognize the seasonal patterns that are in play, it makes decision making a whole lot easier, um, whether to go long or short based on the trade signals you're getting and which um, long or short signal is most likely to be profitable faster, so to speak. Even if the odds are well in your favor, sometimes it's better to put on a position where you expect it to move faster in your direction rather than slower. All right. Disclaimer, all we're doing is for educational purposes only. Anything we talk about today is is basically showing how myself and my and my trading partner Becky, how we profit from the markets and and some of the strategies which we use. And it's not meant to be trading advice for what for what you should be trading. Okay, I'm gonna put in a chat window again the link for the handouts. So you can go to that website and download the handouts, the PDF and the spreadsheet that you'll see today. All right. Some of you have seen this before, but these are all of the ETFs which we trade. But back in October and November, I did two presentations where I just focused on the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P. And since then, quite a few people have told me that um, they would actually prefer to only trade the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P because they hadn't isolated it just down to those um, sectors only. And they hadn't realized just how extremely, extremely um, profitable and if you it is to just focus on those three indices and nothing else. So they didn't care about diversity and everything else. They cared about making money. And they saw when I put it all out there in the, in the stats, it's like, wow, never just looked at Dow and like an S&P because everyone wants to trade gold and oil and real estate and biotech and everything else. But when you get really focused is when you start making real money because now you, it's, it's, you're getting really, really good at a smaller number of things and profits are sort of start happening. I'm gonna put the link in. I think some some new people just showed up. So once again, the link for the handouts is in the chat window. All right. So what you see on the screen right now is a weekly composite chart of the S and P five hundred. This is thirty seven to thirty eight years worth of data, all compiled onto one chart. For the last several months, this has been an uptrend. This is statistically, the market goes up for several months. And we're at this point right now, at the end of February, okay? And through March, statistically, historically, the market did not have a major trend up or a major trend down. It's more of a sideways pattern throughout the month of March. And then as we get through April, we take on another bullish pattern. So basically, if we're seeing buy signals in this time frame, they have a much more higher probability of giving you a profitable trade on the long side. If we see sell signals in this time frame, we have a higher probability that it's going to chop sideways and hit your targets. But if you want to go long or short, Knowing the season seasonal patterns historically is actually good to filter which trades you decide to take and which ones you decide to pass on or when to actually place the trade. So if I was going to, so throughout the month of March, in the first week, I might be okay taking some short trades, but I'll probably pass on the long side of the market because the market in March tends to chop more sideways, Okay. So I, but as we get into the beginning of April, if I start seeing long trades becoming valid, that's when I'm going to be looking to place my long trades. Okay. So it's not that the short trades won't be good, but the real money is meant on the long side during certain times of year. And the way the market is trending is actually fits right in with what you see here. But March tends to be more sideways. So I'd be looking for short trades, maybe the beginning of March, but after that, I'm gonna be waiting for my next buy signal several weeks later, several weeks later. And I've told people in the past, um, we tend to see 
certain losses at certain times of year. March is one of those times we, we see losses because we get trade signals and they chop around up and down. And that's when you think you're going to have a nice short signal, but then it goes up against you. You think you're going to have a nice long signal, but it goes down against you. So this is not the best time to initiate trades if you understand and recognize seasonal patterns. Long trades beginning of March or excuse me, beginning of April would be a good time to set up long trades, middle of March, excuse me, middle of April, good time to set up long trades because seasonally there's a bias to the upside during those times. So now we've done this at the beginning of each of the meetups in the last year or so, or last couple of years. I go over the big picture view of the market so you, we see where we're at and where we are heading to, All right? Along the way, if you have any questions, go ahead and don't raise your hand, but um, go ahead and unmute, ask the question or type it in chat window and I will eventually see it and respond to you. So either chat window, type it in or just unmute and ask a question. Pretend you're like live and in person, just unmute and, hey, what about this? It could be ask, ask about anything you want. So when you just came in, once again, the handouts, link to the handouts is in the chat window. All right, I'm going to switch the view to the monthly chart of the S&P. That's what you should be seeing right now. This is back in 1998. The blue line, 40 period simple moving average. And you're going to see a 40 period moving average just about every chart we do. Reason for that. Picking a bunch of classes with a gentleman named Oliver Velez. He always had a 40 period moving average on his chart. And we started putting it on our charts and then incorporating that into everything we do for analysis. It became a line in the sand for bullish bearish and also direction is moving as an indication of trend. So we will see a 40 period moving average in just about every chart we have, whether it's Forex, futures, um, stocks, options, ETFs, you'll see a 40 period moving average on most of those charts. So this is 1998 and we're in an uptrend of 40s moving up and prices above the 40. Each, each one of these candles is one month, one month of time. This is big picture, okay? Not day-to-day -day noise. This is big picture. It's easy to see what's happening in the markets when you look at the big picture and not get caught up in day-to-day -day news and day-to-day -day noise. So Nice big uptrend for a couple of years. And here we are in 2000. This is the market crash in 2001. We get two closes, two monthly closes below the 40, and we'll tend to see the market go lower. That's an analysis point learned from some people I learned from, from a while back. This also works on lower time frames of two consecutive closes. Expect a push lower. All right, so this was that 2001. Um, technology crash and took a couple of years, but we, here we are in 2004 and we back above the 40 period moving average. Okay. Every couple of years, market price will pull back to somewhere around the 40. If it pulls back when you see a pullback anywhere in this area, usually a buying opportunity in this area or not an exact point, but in the general area of the 40 is usually a buying point. Okay. Massive, massive uptrend for several years after that market crash. And then we have the pullback to the 40, buying opportunity several months if you were trading up a daily chart, that's a some nice trading going on. But then came that 2008 debacle, two consecutive closes below the 40, and we just crashed in 2008 into 2009. This was the bottom of the market in 2009. It was the bottom. All right. Now, took a cup a year or two, but we're back above the 40. And every couple of years, we will pull back to the 40, and then you'll see a bounce. Major, major long term support. There are other levels, but I like to look at the 40 for long, long term and support if you're an investor. Anywhere in this area is your buying opportunity. For investors out there, anywhere in this area on a pullback is when you buy. Okay. Several year long rally all above the uptrending 40. Massive uptrend for years now. We're in 2014. 
Remember, this was 2009, the back here, the bottom of the market. Then it pulled back to the 40 in 2011. This is 2015. Anywhere in this area, buying opportunity. Anywhere in this area, buying opportunity for the long-term investors. Once again, massive uptrend. Here we are in 2018, pullback. Once again, anywhere in this area, buying opportunity for the long-term investors. This is COVID. Everything shut down. Market dropped. When the market starts dropping, they always you hear the news, the market's dropped 10%. We're in a bear market now. No, 10% is a blip. Okay, it's not some bear market. It's just a it's literally a talking point someone tells the people on air to say. And because that's all they have. They, they use the same words every time. The market pulls back. We're in a bear market now. It pulled back 10%. It pulled, it's a blip. It pulled back 10%. We're in a bear market now. No, we're not. It pulled back 10%. We're in a bear market now. No, we're not. 10% pullbacks happen all the time. Okay. That's why you look at the big picture. So you don't, you're not stressing over it. If you're looking at it from day to day, you see all this volatility, all this news, and you think the market's going to go to zero. You think you're going to lose all your 401k and everything's going to go away. That's what they make you think in the short term when you watch it on TV, on podcast or whatever. But when you look at the big picture, it's like, oh, we're just pulling back to major support. Not a big deal. Great opportunity to, to load up on my positions. I said this was a COVID with the, one of the biggest rallies ever in history right after. This took three weeks. This was literally only three weeks of time. This pulled back for three weeks. All the bad stuff that happened during COVID, the market was not one of them. The market pulled back for three weeks when things initially shut down and then boom, took off. Okay. Keep it, keep going now. And we're into 2022. Once again, they'll say bear market, the market's pulling back, oh, 10% pullback, maybe even more. 10%, it went from 480 down to, let's say, 400, okay? So that's more than a 10% pullback, but it'll say bear market, bear market. On a daily chart, it's a lot of volatility, big picture, pulling back to major support. It happens every couple of years. Buying opportunity, a couple of months ago, and I told people this because we had a meetup and I said, hey, look for that pull back to the 40, great buying opportunity. And we have been, here we are now, as of this past Friday, still in this long position or this long move up. And to go back to remember our seasonal chart, where we are right now is exactly what it looks like on that seasonal chart for the end of, February, where it will usually start flattening out and going sideways after this. So I expect this to start going more sideways and then maybe another push higher towards the end of March. That's what I'm expecting. All right. So don't assume the market is, and eventually you will see a pullback. As this keeps going higher, eventually the market will pull back. And you're going to hear in the news media, the sky is falling, the whole panic thing once again. Okay. Normal and expected market movements. Don't stress over it. The markets will go up. They'll pull back. They'll go up. They'll pull back. And when they pull back, that is the beautiful, beautiful buying time. All right. If you have any questions so far on just a recap of, of the overall markets? I said, if you have any questions, don't raise your hand. Just unmute and ask or type in a chat window. Today, we're actually looking at something new, a different strategy most of you have not seen. Um, but I want to give you a general approach to it. If you're already a coaching client, just uh, message me later. I'll send you the whole details and everything and the charts and the whole deal to uh, review and place the orders as needed. So existing coaching clients, you get that for free. So um, just message me later on and, and I will send it to you. So if you're already on my email for the daily trades, just message me. I'll send it to you. All right. So we're going to take a look at the major markets and just trading it down NASDAQ and S&P. Let me switch the share. It's in your handouts, 
the set, these same set of numbers in the PDF. But we, this is most of what you're seeing here is information that's been compiled and it's on the spreadsheets that I've put onto my website multiple times. We update them every month or two. But this is taking just the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P and showing you what just the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P looks like without involving any of the other sectors. So there's no oil, no gas, no gold, no silver, no biotech, no real estate, okay? No healthcare. This is just Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P. So take a look at the overall numbers. from This is for all trades for DIA, QQQ, and SPY. For 2024, so for 2019 through 2024, and by the way, we have the stats that actually go back all the way to 1999 or 2000, okay? But just for the website, so people can get a feel for everything, I asked Becky to assemble all the trades over the last um, five or six years, so you can actually take a look and see as an example, so you can compare certain trade dates with your own analysis. But this data, we our data actually goes back way further, all the way to 1999 and 2000 for the Dow, NASDAQ, and s &P. It's not just six years worth of stats. We have 24 years worth of stats, at least, that go into our decision-making for the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P. But this is what's readily available to you that you can reference on the website that we put into a format um, that you can easily see. Okay, I have a question. Do you use or not use volume on your charts? That's a very good question because on this strategy I'm going to be showing is use of volume. Absolutely. Um, when you can find a way to objectively use volume, objectively, not just looks like, feels like nonsense, because then you can't get 10 different people deciding on the same thing with the same outcome. So we use volume in a very... 100% objective way. So for this particular, what we're going to go over today, we will be using volume, but I just want to give you a feel for the stats. 89% wins um, overall in 2024, 100% wins so far for Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P. 2023, 88% wins, 76% wins in 2022. If we didn't do more control, it would be more like 85 to 90% wins. Um. 2021, 94% wins, 92% wins in 2020, and 95% wins in 2019, just trading down NAS NASDAQ and S&P. When I had done this a couple months back in October, November, people saw this, they were like, wow, we just want to focus our trading on down NASDAQ and S&P. Although I make the information available to you, it's really... You have to be creative and take the numbers, work them around and see what works best for you. So, you know, don't wait for me to assemble the data for you. The data is available to you online. You just have to, to like um, sort by different stats, by different um, sectors, and you can come up with the same information I'm showing you here. And you go like, wow, this is what I want to trade. Okay. And so this is how myself and Becky would make our decisions this is how my coaching clients make decisions. We have the, the numbers, objective numbers. This is for the DIA and QQQ. So all broken down. If you want to trade a Dow, it's 88%, 100% wins, 91% wins for the whole year, 70% wins. That was 2022, 91%, 90, 100% wins in 2019. Just trading the Dow. Here are the stats for the, for the NASDAQ, QQQ. And we know that some people literally can't afford to just buy calls and puts on the big indices. So they have their smaller versions with XLI, which is the Dow Industrials. Um, it's about 93% correlated with DIA. And we have XLK, technology sector, which is about also about 90-something percent correlated with QQQ. So we have stats on that. So if you want to trade XLI in place of DIA or XLK in, case, in place of QQQ, the options are a lot, lot less expensive and could give you comparable results. Here is 2024 for the XLI, represented a Dow, 91% wins, 100% wins. 
91% wins, 79% wins in 2022, 100% wins in 21. You might even find better results um, trading um, the surrogate, so to speak, XLK. Great, great, great results trading XLK or XLI in place of QQQ and DIA. And they were a lot less expensive, okay? So there's something for everyone, regardless of your account size. So you can trade either one and do pretty well without needing a huge account to be able to. So if you don't, if you can't afford to be paying fourteen, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars for one contract, you can spend a whole lot less with a couple hundred dollars per contract trading XLI and XLK. All right. So, and here are some more stats. This is stats for XLI. And like I said, this is in your handouts. We have a partial listing of valid trades. Um, I'm going to take a look at some of them now. And let's see, I have a question. How about other tech effects like IG? You have to look, how about other tech ETFs? Are those leveraged ETFs and are those, a question for you, are those leveraged ETFs? And what's the option open interest and volume like on those? Do you know? This stuff, okay, they're not linear. Leveraged ETFs are not linear. They do not move the same way that a regular ETF moves the you cannot trade them the same way you can buy the shares and do something with them but they do not react the same way as a regular etf so it will it'll be a mess for you <laughs> okay and they probably like i said bid ask is not great it probably don't have the same kind of volume and i'm sure that the option open interest is nowhere near tradable as the um, bigger sector ETFs that I have on the list. So ETFs, so some of those you can buy shares, you can do some, maybe some spreads with them, but no, they leverage ETFs are not for this type of trading. For people who like to buy shares, like instead of buying the share of an ETF, the leverage ETF actually gives you more buying power. So those are kind of, if you're going to be day trading, those are great for day trading for the, 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 the leverage ETFs but not for this. For this, stick with, they're not linear, stick with the standard ETFs. They work really, really well. And there's usually enough option open interest to accommodate most traders, most traders. If you're a big dollar trader, then you're going to be more limited to a certain group of ETFs that can accommodate um, um, your dollar size orders. So let's go to a daily chart. And we're going to take a look at a strategy. Like I said, this is a strategy that I have not put on to. I've not done in any presentation. One second. But since people were so interested, went ahead and shared it or sharing it for the first time. All right. Okay, first let me get this. Let me go ahead and share the stats first so you understand what we're looking at. And then I'll come back to that. Okay. Two strategies. Squeeze play sector sell, squeeze play sector buy. Focusing on the Dow, NASDAQ S P and and the industrials, XLI and XLK, representing the Dow and representing technology sector in place of QQQ. This is, these are the stats for trading them short. These are the stats for trading the strategy long. The strategy is not exactly the same as it is long and short, but um, it's not one is not just the opposite of the other. One is not just the opposite of the other. It doesn't work like that. The markets do not move down the same way they move up. You try to trade something the exact same way up and down, then you're going to find yourself losing money needlessly because you didn't fully understand that markets don't move 
down the same way they move up. Very different. Um, very, very different. Markets go up slowly. They go down quickly. And the strategies are different to cap capitalize on them. All right, let's take a look at this cell, the stats. One expiration cycle of time is basically one month. Two expiration cycles of time is basically two months worth of, of time in the option for the most part. So anything you see in little rectangles, Becky does this. I do not put numbers into rectangles. Um, um, Becky's specialty is data management. So she manages all the numbers, all the stats, all the spreadsheets. Anything you see in a spreadsheet format in a little in rectangles, Becky does that, maintains this for us. She's been doing this um, since we started trading. That was back in 2005, and she's been maintaining all the stats ever since back then. And this is our weekly, monthly updates. She does this, and we share this with everyone I'm coaching. So people I'm coaching get updates for this regularly because we live and die by the numbers, okay? If you don't understand your numbers, how can you trade in, how can you trade the markets, which is all about numbers and dollars and cents and statistics, if you don't understand the, the numbers involved in what you're doing and just guessing? So if you want to consistently profit, then you have to understand the numbers and put together a plan that works with the numbers you have. It's, this is not about guessing, okay? We don't do feel looks like, feels like. We don't do that, okay? We know when we trade this strategy, and this goes back 20 years on the major indices, well, actually 20, 24 years now on the major indices of data giving us this number. This is not just from 2019. This 92% wins goes back to 1999 or 2000, okay? ATR, that's how average true range, that's the first target. If we use a target of one times the ATR, and this is how the win percentage since 2000, every time we get a trade valid with one month worth of time. 1.2 times ATR, bigger first target, 89% wins, and 1.5 times ATR, even bigger target, 84% wins. All right. And this is... What we used to know, what eighty? if you see it shaded light blue, it means it's 84% or higher. If it's 83% and lower, we don't touch it. There's a margin of error always in, involved, and we factor that into our decision-making. So margin of error could be data errors, could be human errors, could be any chart errors, stuff happens, okay? Just because you see a chart doesn't mean it's correct. Charts give you errors. Data gives you errors, okay? People don't even realize it, but it's not always right what you see on the screen. And we make decisions based on what we see on the screen and it could be totally wrong. But that's all factored into the margin of error. 84% wins or higher is the minimum we even consider. So if we go two expiration cycles, it's, 80, it's the same stats basically as one expiration cycle. So if I was gonna trade DIA short when this is valid, if I buy one month worth of option time, it costs the option costs a lot less than buying two months worth of option time. Okay. So that goes into my decision making. I know people who will always do two months worth of option time regardless because they want a more for in their own mind a, a more guarantee, so to speak, of a good trade, a higher probability of a good trade. All right. So like QQQ is an example. I would not be buying one month worth of time because I'm just guaranteeing myself a loss, basically. It's too low probability. It's under 80%. But if I do two months worth of time, then I'm well into my acceptable range and percentages. So this is what we use to make decisions. And Becky updates this regularly. Those 93%, 96% wins, meaning this strategy... When, to, when it's valid, take the trade. When it's valid, take the trade. This is cash flow. If you end up taking these strategies and you get an extra 10, 15, 20 trades a year, that is just positive cash flow into your account with very few losses, okay? Especially when the stats are this high, okay? This is 20 something years worth of data. 
that assembled it in this, and we so few losses. Okay. On the buy side, even better stats. Okay. But this is the strategy we're looking at today. And um, it sort of overlaps what we've seen before, but there's an extra little twist to it. The details, details, I'll still say for coaching clients, but I want to give you a general overview of it. And like I said, for the people already working with me, if you're on the meetup right now, message me later. I'll send you the full details for both of these the trading plan and all the stats and everything. Same trade management, the same trade management we always do, but um, different setup. All right, I want to go back to the chart now and we're going to take a look at some valid trade dates. Okay. Let's take a look at a recent sell signal, 111.24. And that's on SPY, 111.24 on SPY. Okay. So those of you who have been on the meetup with me before, these are the trigger lines. It's a linear regression line and the moving average of the linear regression line. The, 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 the trigger lines cross bullish, they cross bearish, and that's an ongoing thing. They cross bullish, they cross bearish, they cross bullish, they cross bearish, they cross bullish. Okay. And they're a great indicator of trend. And we use them as a, either a primary trade signal or a way to confirm another trade signal. In this particular case, we use, um, this is gonna be a pullback strategy within a bullish move uh, or a pullback strategy within a bearish move. The other short strategies, some of you are familiar with, if not most of you, like on the trigger lines, um, we look for cells when the market is trending down. This particular one is will give you different signals. It will give you a sell signal when the market is trending up. So when the 40 period moving average, the blue line is going up is when we're gonna see the sell signal happen. So this will be totally different dates from what you have seen on the other strategies, okay? This is a counter trend trade, but as you saw the numbers, extremely high probability trade when it happens. You have a question here. What are the indicators you use on your trigger? What indicators? Trigger lines, Donchian ch channel. Trigger lines, Donchian channel. Mean line, 40 period moving average, squeeze, and this is volume. Also on here at the bottom, you know, which is hidden, is eight, ATR, average true range, and, and the range value. Okay. So, and depending on strategy, different strategies, different indicators, but these are the main ones we use on most charts, orange mean line. And if you, I'll show you the link for it, but on my YouTube channel, you, I think you've probably seen those videos, but um, you can review those also. All right, so for this sell signal, when the market is increasing, meaning the 40 period moving average is going higher, what we're looking for is a bearish crossover on the trigger lines. So here we have a bullish cross. This is plot one, this is plot two. Plot two is the linear regression line and plot one is the moving average of the linear regression line. So plot one crossed above plot two and we're in a bullish move. Here, plot one crosses below plot two in a bearish move. While in a bearish cross, what we're looking for on the squeeze is this type of pattern on the histogram, light green, light green, dark green, is where momentum starts to decrease. So we have increasing momentum, increasing momentum, positive above zero and increasing, above zero and increasing, above zero and increasing, decreasing. So this is our first indication of decreasing momentum during the bearish cross of the trigger lines while in an uptrend. 
here's our cell. The ATR that day, average true range, you'll see it on the data box right here. On that day, the ATR is $4.48. And we enter our, we buy put options the next day at or above the open price of the ETF with a, four, with a minimum $4.48 first target. That is hit within two days, maybe three, and then some. It dropped seven points. So it market went from open at 477.84 and it dropped all the way down to 469. So it, it, our target was four dollars and forty something cents. It dropped seven points. Target is hit and then some. A quick move like this, you're looking at a 20 something to 30 something percent return on your money within one or two days. If you have, have chosen to do one expiration cycle, your options would be even cheaper. You might be getting a 30 to 40% return. If you chose two expiration cycles, the options would be going to be more ex expensive. So you might be getting a 20 to 30 something percent return because there's higher upfront cost. Okay. Once again, I'm looking for a bearish cross of the trigger lines when the market is going up. 40 increasing, and then I'll look for the squeeze. This is not standard settings, okay? This is not standard settings. So if you go with the, start looking at the squeeze indicator and look at default settings, you will not see this happen. This is not, this is shared with my coaching clients. This is not the default setting, okay? And this, so here is my trade signal, and I, I will be using op volume to confirm this. The big difference in this strategy or these two strategies, which I'm, which I showed a little while ago for the stats, is that we're using volume as a confirmation, and the way we use volume is a way I learned to use volume a long, long, long time ago, and, but, over time we found very objective ways to use it, repeatable ways, and nothing subjective. I don't want to say, well, volume's increasing, volume's decreasing, volume spike is. But all of that is part of the decision making, whether it's increasing or spike or it's the biggest volume in so many days, that type of thing is all part of this decision making, very rules based. It's like a one sentence rule, but it works extremely, extremely well. Extremely well. Okay. So here's our trade. Boom. Money in pocket. Going back to another previous one, 8923, I have a the listing kind of summarized next to me. By the way, these are all, for the people already coaching clients, you already know you have sell signals in here. You already know you have sell signals in here. They're all obviously good sell, sell signals because you all know what the set strategy is. And you know you have some buy signals in here too. So here we are. We have a bearish cross of the trigger lines. So remember, I'm only showing you one strategy out of, it used to be six strategies that I share with everyone. We've been doing the same six strategies for the last, I don't know how many years. Um, and we're adding two, the squeeze play buy and the squeeze play sell. So that was gonna be eight strategies for the ETF options, sector options, ETFs. Um, so visually, we look for the market going up, but a bearish cross of the trigger lines. Once we have the bearish cross of the trigger lines, we're looking for this light, for it to go light green, then decrease. Take a look right here on the indicator on momentum, because when you're on the chart, you can't see the area above the zero line. You can't tell with just your eyes whether that's green or red or anything else because it's too small. So if you take a look at momentum, it's dark red. Dark red is increasing. Light green or green, light green, red. Okay. So here we'll, we have a bearish cross. We have red that's decreasing. We have dark red now it's increasing. We're looking for light green followed by which is increasing, red zero and increasing followed by decreasing. So here it's increasing. Here it's light, it's green. The light green, you cannot see that with your eyes. You have to use a data box. Light green, now it's greater than zero and increasing. The next day, decreasing. During the bullish move, the move up, based on the 40 period moving average, while it's moving up, we get a bearish cross of the trigger lines. 
and then we look for the squeeze to give us a cell by going above zero, where it turns light green, and then cell where it decreases in value. Here's our cell signal on this day. That's based on the squeeze. Take a look at the momentum, turn light green, and then after that, it decreased by turning red. That's our cell signal, okay? That's our cell signal. This does, I'm gonna go, um, hang on a second. That, I'm looking at SPY, that is only 92% wins, only 92% wins with one month worth of time in the option, okay? So, and this is going to get hit really fast. Okay, someone pull out a, a calculator. I'm going to ask you to calculate something for me. Some of you already know what it is I'm doing, but some of you might not. So we see where the target is. ATR this day is $4.61. The signal day, the day we got our cell signal. I'm going to type it in the chat window, actually. Um, target equals four point. Six one. That's the ATR. That's the target. So ATR is average true range. It's a measure of the volatility of the underlying um, product, which is the ETF. We are not doing analysis on options. We're using options to capitalize on the opportunity. But all that complex analysis that involves with, with options. I we got past that a long time ago. It was like we got really, really good at it, myself and Becky, to a point where we didn't even have losses. It was that good. But um when it comes time to markets going against, you have to make adjustments and adjustments and adjustments. It was it was not realistic um to trade bigger dollars and not have to put money into trades gone bad to not to avoid losing your money. It was just, we knew how to do it, but it was just ridiculous. This is how we envision trading in the first place, pure directional, <laughs> risk fairly low. Okay, 461. The open price of the ETF the next day is 448.19. That's the price right up here. The open price of ETF the next day is 448.19. I'm gonna type it in. Open equals 448.19. So ATR on the day we had a trade signal is 461. The open price of the ETF the very next day is 448.19. What's 448.19 minus 4.61? That's gonna be our target. So 448.19 minus 4.61, what's that value? If someone type type it type in the number calculation. Four forty eight nineteen minus four point six one. Please type it in the chat window. Because the calculator's out. Four forty eight point one nine minus four point six one. Gee, this might take a while. 448.19 minus 4.61, what's the value? Okay, 443.58, okay. When was that reached? The low this day was 443.35. And so the target got reached two days later. So let's think about this. You get in the next day, it's market closed down here, then it gapped up. You enter, let's say you enter right at the open. You're gonna be buying the first in the money put option. Okay. And you have a, a target of $4.61, and it, that target gets hit on the gap down. Because the next day it closed down, then gap down here. So on the gap down, you're going to get 
20 to 30 something percent very easily, very easily, maybe even higher on the gap down where the $4.61 target, the target was hit on this day after the gap down dropped and rallied, before it rallied, hit targets hit. So this 443.35 is a low. So it gapped down, hit your target, and then it opened at 443.97, dropped, hit your target, then rallied higher. Okay. It opened at 448.19. It went as high as 451.70. What if you got into the trade later in the day? You got in at, instead of open at 440, instead of getting in at 448. 19, you got in at 449 or 450 or 451, okay? It's at the open price or higher. If you, you don't have to be upright at the open to do this. You actually make poor decisions at the market open, really poor decisions. You're better off not trading at the open and just waiting until later in the day get there you if it's above the open great put a trade on if it's below the open chill you'll either miss the trade or it'll give another opportunity later on but you're looking to get in at or above the open price if you got into the open you're going to get 20 to 30 something percent return at least when a target is hit within one day literally within a day if you got in a higher a point or two higher because the market opened rallied and then this used to be a green candle, and then it dropped to end the day. You get in two, three points higher than when your target is hit. Instead of being four points in the money, you're going to be five, six, seven points in the money. Instead of getting in the money, instead of getting a 20 to 30 something percent return, you're now getting a 50, 60, 70 something percent return on your money really, really fast. Um, that's the difference. If you get in up here, you're still going to buy the first in the money put option. But now when your target is set, instead of having a four point target, you can have a five point target, or you could have a six point target, or you could have a seven point target. It's still going to be 92% chance that your target will get hit, except now it's getting hit with not a four point target, not a 461 target, but now with a, a five, six or seven point target just by relaxing and waiting to a little bit later in the day, get at a better price than expected, same trade, okay? This is how I trade. I don't get up in the morning at the open to place trade. That, that ain't gonna happen. But I'll wait for when I see a better opportunity. Uh, it could be that day, it could be a, it could be a two days from now, it could be a week from now, it could, be, could, it could even be a month from now. As long the target isn't reached and you're at or above the open price, for a put or at or below the open price for a call, the trade's still in play, okay? Any questions so far? I'm gonna go one more example of the cell. Take a look at the spreadsheet in front of me, which you all have a partial listing of the spreadsheet, but not the full thing, 5223. All right, here we are. Market uptrend, 40 period increasing. 40 increasing, bearish cross of the trigger lines. Squeeze indicator goes. See, I'm looking at the color here because I can't see what color this is. So I'm checking to see if it's, if it's green or not. It's not, it's still dark red. So it's not greater than zero. So here it's greater than zero, it's green, 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 decrease. Dark green is decreasing. Here's my trade signal. I get in at or above the open price the next day. Here's my here's my short trade, cha-ching, cash flow. All right. Similar nature for the buy side. I'm going to use to find an example of a buy long trade. 10, 16, 23. SPY. Uh, it's 10, 16, 23. And by the way, volume was also in included with that as, as one of the criteria. This one, 
the the trend of the 40 may or may not be a factor. I have to look at the details, but we get a bullish cross of the trigger lines, bullish cross of the trigger lines, and then the squeeze goes below zero that increases in value. It goes negative, then increases in value. That's our buy signal. And it might go against you for a while, but we have another sell over here also, and we have another buy. We have multiple trades going on here. Okay, so it's not just one trade. So while this is going against you, this buy signal goes against you. There's another sell signal in here that's going in your favor. So you're making... So right now, this these calls are going against you. But over here, you have puts that are working in your favor. And then when the market goes up, cha-ching, gap. When it starts gapping, it's like just ring those dollars, basically. And if you've ever used Ninja Trader, you know exactly what I mean by ring those dollars. Because that's the cha-ching sound, sound it makes when your target gets hit if you use Ninja Trader to trade on. All right. So that's a buy signal. Another buy signal. Go back 5223. And there are other many signals in here too with the other strategies. So we trade multiple strategies. So we can't, we don't, I'm not showing you one, okay? One strategy of the newer ones that give you that 90 something percent wins. All right. So I have two, uh, that's B1. I have to sell, excuse me. Uh, 32923, 329 as an example. So it looked kind of odd. Okay. Here we get a bullish crossover of the trigger lines. Bullish cross. It went from bearish to bullish. The squeeze goes negative, then it increased in value. Volume is a factor here. Volume is considered. Okay. I'm not detailing it here, but volume is part of the consideration. Here is your trade. You're going to buy the next open or lower. You're buying call options. And it just gapped and took off. This is this is just this is just basically a money trade. Once it starts gapping, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. So you had two days to get into this trade. You could have gotten in any time during this day or any time during this day, okay? Entries at or below the open price this day, which means you got all day to get into the trade. The target would have been $7.59, but this is $3.97, and this is... You could have gotten in a day later and had a set of a 7 point, a 7, 8 point, instead of a... 759 target had a six point or seven point eight point target. Once again, with the gaps, instead of getting a 20, 30 something percent return, all of a sudden by getting in later, you're getting a 40, 50, 60 percent return on your money at the, at the first target. Okay. This is an example of one strategy we do. Well, two with the buy and the sell, but it's just part of the bigger group of, stra of strategies. And when combined is when you see the results that we get, as long as you're consistent with your trading. Um, for the existing coaching clients, like I said, message me later and I'll send you the details for this and the updated charts also. Okay, Olga, a question. There are two reasons we should be in a short, longer term trade. In a short, longer term trade, couldn't Squeeze be thought as additional short-term trades? Question was specific to first example. Well, we don't know how long the trade is going to take. That's why we have one to two months worth of time in the option. Because especially counter-trend trades, counter-trend trades can go against you for a while. The, the win-loss percentages don't change. But um, we have the stats to tell us how much time is needed. How quickly they move in our favor. It it's nice when they move quickly in our favor. It really is nice when they move quickly in our favor. But we still need to give the options enough time. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to totally answer your question. Um, 
Could squeeze be thought of as additional short-term trades? This is a variation on the other squeeze you refer you might be thinking of also. Um, but this particular version, markets don't go against you as often. The other ones market go against you more often. This one, this particular version of the squeeze play, um, markets tend to move in your favor faster. So as a result, it becomes more profitable. And also the other one, we don't even have the option for one expiration cycle. This one, we have the option for one expiration cycle. So it's just overall much more profitable. Um, I'm not sure it totally answers your question, but you can always call me later and we can talk. You know how to find me. All right, I'm gonna switch charts and then I can clarify anything to you. And I'm gonna switch charts back to the handout. All right, so this is in, okay, that's the list of different deals there. And this, this is our big list of all the trades. This is on the web on our website so you can go to our website and get this whole full listing this goes back to 2019 all the different strategies for dow s p and nasdaq and on the website you'll see the some same summary you have in your handouts so this is all available to you and if you also excel k and xli all the trades over the last since 2019 is on there and i i blocked out just to squeeze play buy and sell for the presentation, but these are all those trades. You can notice there's not too many losses in there because status win, 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 and up all those with the 50 something trades and three losses. That's pretty good. That's in the last, since 2019. That's how good the strategy is. Just think about when, how this translates the dollars and cents and cash flow. It's that good a strategy, okay? It's, this is how we trade. This is how we've been doing it for a long time. This is how we very consistently make money every year, making good decisions based on objective information. And seasonal patterns is so huge. It's so huge to understand seasonal patterns. We both got exposed to seasonality back in like 2005 or six with the Optionetics folks. Um, that was our first exposure to seasonals. And we've stick, 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 stayed with those. We, I know Becky and myself, when we trade pure seasonals, I'm not even sure we've had any losses. It's been that good when we trade with the seasonal patterns. And that includes commodities. Um, we used to trade, we haven't done that with much lately, but we used to trade grains, pork bellies, um, lean hogs, all that type of stuff um, with um, in line with seasonal patterns. And it's just money, money, money. It's just cash flow, cash flow, positive cash flow. And it works extremely well. Going to change the share again. Okay. So this is listing in your handout as a quick reference. Um, you got some squeeze play buys in here and some squeeze play sells. So you can go back to your charts, take a look at those. Uh, you, if you want to try to create, create those on your own, you can try, but you don't have all the details needed to actually implement a full strategy. So for my coaching clients, I said, I'll send you all the detailed trading plans. Just let me know if you want it. And um, because this one, adding volume as a confirming factor is huge. And so that's a big difference here for these two strategies using volume as a factor. So I was asked about that earlier. This time volume becomes a factor. We're also doing volume as a factor for several of our future strategies, which takes the win-loss up several notches, literally up several notches in win-loss percentages. So for those of you who are not working with me yet, if you're interested in working with me on these, this is what I charge from my coaching. Everything I do is one-on-one, -on -one, so everything is customized to you and, you, and we adapt to your schedule. So um, I have a pretty flexible schedule during the week. So if you're off days, afternoons, evenings, not Saturdays, I'm not available Saturdays ever. Uh, or Sunday afternoons, then I can work with you on uh, one-on-one. If whether you're a beginner 
or are you a veteran trader looking to just add more avenues of cash flow? Um, I work with you accordingly. And we can, if it takes you a day to be ready and we trade live, great. If it takes you a month or two months to be ready, there's one person I worked with, it took them a year, literally a year to be ready to trade live. So whatever it takes, okay? Um, I don't limit the amount of time I spend with you, but you need to commit at least three to six months to learn the strategies and become consistent, okay? Eventually, you will have some losses and you have to accept those losses and move on and understand the big picture. You will have two to three losing months every single year. You will, those two to three months will be offset by two to three winning months. The other six months of trading represents your profits for the year. So if you envision this, the first three months you're trading, nothing but wins, nothing but win. Cha ching boom, boom, boom. He's like, this is the great, greatest thing ever. And the next three months, you have nothing but losses. It's just, and then you go like, you're crushed. All the money you made wiped away and then some. Guess what? That's called the three months a year where you make money and then it's negated by the three months you, you, you lost. So now you're starting from scratch again. The next six months is your profits for the year. That's why you have to have the big picture. And I might be thinking, I'm going to just keep losing forever. No, it doesn't work like that. But you might feel like that. That's why you can't let feelings interfere with um, the reality of the objective method of running a business of trading. You will have losses. You cannot expect realistically to make money every single month. That's just not a reality. Okay. You will have some losses. But as long as you're consistent with your trading and count on and contact me whenever you have concerns, we go over what you're doing. I like to, to review your trades with you every month just to make sure you're doing the right thing, not making mistakes. Some people are embarrassed to let me know that they've done something wrong or they've had losses that they shouldn't have lost, shouldn't have made. Talk to me. Um... Think of me as your confessional. You can tell me whatever. It's it's because you need to do that because trading is a lonely thing. You're all by yourself. If you lose all your money trading, your friends and family will not care. Okay. Your friends will tell you, oh, you're just gambling. So you lost it. They don't, this is not gambling, but that's the way people see it. You will get no consideration if they're like if you lost your money gap um it's like losing money gambling oh too bad you should have been gambling losing money trading oh you shouldn't have been trading that's just gambling it is not just gambling but you really have to know what you're doing and you have to be really disciplined about it because it's a business and but if it can be a really really good lucrative business or even a part-time business just think about it for most people if you can generate an extra 500 to a thousand dollars a month for most human beings that's changes their life. An extra $500,000 a month changes most people's lives. That's all it takes. Okay. Um, and if you start trading bigger dollars, then you can actually start making a living doing this and not have to rely on a regular job or have this supplement other things you're doing. And not so money adds up quickly if you're consistent with your trading. And once you get to a certain groove where you're just always making money, it's like, wow, you know, and it's really a nice way to feel knowing that if everything goes wrong someplace, you know, you can still come back to trading and generate income and be able to support yourself, your family, pay your bills, keep a roof over your head, even if everything else goes horribly wrong. This is knowledge you have that's applicable to the markets. Um, and you can go in anywhere you have a computer access and a few dollars and, and trade and make money. That's why I love this. I love this stuff. I'm always working on my trading every week. I'm looking at how I can make more money doing everything. And I've spent thousands, tens of thousands of hours on this, tens of thousands of hours and still do because I really enjoy it. Okay. Um, so anyway, if you want to work with me, it's 1750. If you contact me before Wednesday, I can take $250 off of this. So it'll be $1,500. Let me know before Wednesday, before this coming Wednesday, and I will take two fifty off of this for fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, and but you need to commit. You have to commit three to six months of consistently trading the strategies to fully understand it and see it work. After those three to six months of consistent trading, 
I can say you will have a really good shot of being right there. You're, you're good to go. And then we keep on advancing and then we get into more evolved trade management. There are more ways to, to manage trades to make more efficient returns. So it's a constantly growing thing we do. And this is for the primary strategies. That's for eight strategies, which we just added to. And if you want to do everything that you see in that big list of trades, that includes the weekly strategies and the market internals, then that's $39.95. And if you'll contact me before, this includes the daily strategies, market internals, and weekly, and meaning everything, then take $500 off of this. Contact me before um, Wednesday. And how this works also is the weekly strategies. There are some people, because of their busy lives and schedules, they don't have time during the week to do reviews and place trades. So they just do the weekly strategies where you do your review on weekends, place your trade Monday morning, and you're done till the following weekend. That's it. Do your review Sunday afternoon, place your trade Monday morning, you're done. And we've had several people like that. And it works extremely well. We're not, not showing you those stats today, but if you sort through the spreadsheet to weekly, the WKLY sort of weekly, you'll find all the weekly trades for the last five or six years also and get the stats for those. Everything is readily available. I, I have, I'm pretty much open with all the trades. Up there on the website. Um, but to get those results, you got to follow the rules. You don't just get results by getting um, an email with here, the trade's valid. No, you have to know how to manage your position how to trade size the position, so on and so forth. Is You have to understand what you're doing and not just place a trade. You have to know how to manage it and allocate risk, the whole deal. And like I said, everything I do is one-on-one -on -one with you. And you're going to have more trades than you can possibly take. So we, some people are really, really like just trading down NASDAQ and S&P once they see the win-loss stats. And it's so profitable and so few losses. So when the, more, the fewer losses you have, you also feel better not having losses. So do you have any questions? We have a smaller group today. So any questions at all on anything, feel free to call me later. My phone number is on the handout, on the website, on the contact page. Let me go to that real quick so you see that. Okay. Here is my contact sheet on... So you can send me, use the contact form. If you want to set up a time to talk about your specific situation, message me or email me. Um, and we can set up a time to chat. All the valid trades are listed here on the spreadsheet. You can download the spreadsheet. The handout for today is here. We'll probably do another futures meetup in the next sometime in the next month. The coaching programs are all detailed here. Okay, like I said, I'll take 250 off of this one and um, 500 off of this for the full options program. If you want to do futures, I'll do the similar deal for the futures also if you want to do futures. So futures can be more profitable in options, but there's, a, there's more technical analysis involved. But for all of these, I send out each day the valid trades for the day. I send out the valid trades each day so you know exactly what we found valid so then you confirm what you found valid so we email the valid trades every day so you know you're not on your own but i will work with you as much as you need to to get you up and going um if you want to meet one two three times a week we'll meet one two or three times a week that's all good and if you need me there with you when you're placing your first live trade i'll be on either in person with you if you're nearby i'm in santa clara or online on zoom it's all good all right if we don't have any more questions, we're going to end this meeting for today. And then we'll resume for our next meetup, which is probably going to be on futures, and that'll be sometime in March. All right. So, do you have any? If we don't have any questions, see you all next month for our next meetup. Or, but just email me, call me with any questions. I'm readily available to answer anything. Or if you want to work with me, you know how to find me. All right. Talk to you all soon then.